Hi everybody, so this is Doctor Who season 4, episode 4, part 3 um, of the Highlanders. Um, I'm probably not going to hang around too much, um, I'm just going to get straight on into this one. I love that every time there's any kind of information that comes up about the, the name of the programme, they just start playing the bagpipes, just in case we forgot what was going on I think. Sending us. Hawkins. What? Who knows? Oh, there's someone here, Mike. <laughs> hey, mate. Got the idea where they're sending us? <laughs> Be weird. The spies. What? This man's an Englishman. One more blow, we can strike for Scotland. Oh, what are you talking about? One more piece of vermin to be stamped out. It's Englishman. He is a friend to our prince. He's a friend of mine. He helped bring me here, weak but alive. Oh, well, now I crave your pardon. A friend that was resolved of quickly. A friend of mine. Well, thanks, I'm glad to hear it. Then how came he here with you? Who, oh, Ben? He's a deserving English sailor. We're not exactly being treated like prisoners of war now, are we? Has it occurred to you that this trash could be using this vessel without the knowledge of his king? He's using it for a cover of his obviously illegal trafficking, I suppose. He is going to sell us like the stinking fish he thinks we are. Slave labour. That's what we're going to be. Slave labour. He gave me such a fright. I'm not used to fetching and carrying. You know, we used to have our own servants. It's obvious. Did you get everything? Fine. The clothes for you and... I find Polly quite patronising, especially after watching this story and certain things she's obviously, like, said to Kirsty. It's kind of as though sometimes she doesn't realise this is a different time. People lived differently, but she's quite, as I say, patronising about it at times, and I don't particularly like that very much. Always assuming he's got out of that terrible pit. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. All right, you two. In here and see the officer. Go on. In you go. Get in there. Never mind. Get your stuff here. I'll stop my head off your head. I'm not having a great ugly Englishman laying hands on me. Stop it. Hi, Maria. Both of you. Hey, wake up, hmm. wake up. How is she? Oh, no. These two look like the rebels we were searching for yesterday, sir. What a nasty man. Tell him we're not, I'll she do. Oh, just a minute. Hey, we're all friends. I can see that. <laughs> well, that's all, Sergeant. Be about your business. Sir. <clears throat> what more do you want from me? Step me, you'll take all my money. I haven't even the price of a glass of wine left on me. I don't suppose the doctor and the others have a glass of water to drink, never mind wine. Now, where <laughs> the doctor's are all right, actually, to be honest. In prison, I expect, where they belong. They're not with checked. Now, where are they? I don't know. I just round them up. I'll have to ask Solicitor Gray. He's in charge of prisoners, not me. Mr. Wench is there to see the solicitor. Mm. Oh, I oh. beg your pardon, madam. Kindly sit down the yard. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Why is everyone, like, not even noticing that he's a man? What can I do? Where is the solicitor? We're seeing to his duties. It has pleased his majesty to declare that whereas there are a great many of his rebellious subjects in jail, a speedy example must be made of them. Uh, clemency. Therefore it is ordained that there will be those required as witnesses. Traitors, you mean. Witnesses? Those not wanting to turn King's evidence will be hanged. Well, well, which of you lucky lads will be the first to sign? Ah, don't touch that pen. I know fine what you offer, Mr. Solicitor. I have seen these plantations in the Indies. Not one of you men that signs will live out your seven years. Better a quick and honourable death at the end of a rope than a chance to work for your eventual liberty. Liberty? Uh, Unless, of course, Mr. Mackay, you would care to turn King's evidence. For the rest of you, for those who wish to sign, over here. For those who wish to hang, over there. 
Make your choice. Jesus. Yes, get it! Hold off there! Clap him in arms. When I return to the country, we'll bind him and drop him from the highest yard. Mr. Solicitor! Mark this! All of you! So I'm guessing this is the solicitor that Kirsty and Polly are waiting for. To pass the time, what say you to a nice round of whist? You need four for whist. Can be removed also, your madam. There's nothing nicer than a nice game of whist. Madam, I told you. I'm sure you'll oblige The German doctor. Mr. Gray. Uh -huh. Yes. Nothing. Come along, Perkins, make haste. Oh, to go. That's just it. Remember, <laughs> you have seen nothing. What? <laughs> Your eyes. Eyes? You wouldn't want another headache now, would you? Oh, no, 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 but... Uh, <laughs> ten minutes, Doctor. Ten minutes. <laughs> That looks like a sherry. <laughs> you might need a bottle. Those dresses really do suit you, Doctor. Oh, you saucy girl. <laughs> the very image of my old Granny McLeod. You're wonderful, Doctor. I know. She's just going to sleep. <laughs> Why? I've forgotten. Now, what are we going to do? Do? What do you mean, do? Doctor, don't go all sleepy on us now. We've got to do something. I mean, wasn't France your ally or something? I'll not leave Scotland. It'd be safer. Huh? Never. Well, it wouldn't be for very long, just for seven. Just for a few years, and then it'd be safe to come back. <laughs> just for seven years, oh, love. I'll leave my own country. Oh, please, so. If you and your father may get killed, you stay in the glens. Come on. I've only mean, just thought about it. Good work. It is he loves that bloody hat. Anyone got any money? Yes, 17 guineas that we picked from the English lieutenant. That's a fortune in these days. Now, we've <coughs> got weapons, lots of them, and a rowing boat. Well, I can get a rowing boat. Good, and we can buy the weapons. Can we? From the English soldiers. It's fantastic! Ah, you, go fetch me. Oh, God, he's got them contracts. Mr. Trask! Why isn't he ant? Oh, I thought he was going to be dead or something then. Is everything in readiness? It is. I've had Perkins here. Copy out three contracts, just to make sure. Perkins, bring the deserter on deck. Of course. We haven't done very well, have we? They wouldn't take me seriously. No, nor me. I do hope the doctor's had better luck. Must have robbed the Duke's arsenal. Yes, something like that. Oh, fantastic! I know. <laughs> There's a bonny one. Just a minute. What is it? This ring. Well, let me see. Oh, that! It's her father. She won't let you touch it. I'm not surprised. It's not her father's. You lie. The prince gave it to my father of his own hand in heat of battle. My father saved the prince's life. Then it is right and proper that it should now save his life. Give it me. And I kind of couldn't, I couldn't stay focused in the last episode, but I enjoyed this one a, a lot more. Um, I'm not honestly sure why. Um, considering the reconstruction episodes, these episodes are kind of passing quite quickly, and then kind of before I know it, the episode's finished, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to be interested to see what happens in the next one. Um, I 
didn't actually mind Ben in this episode, um, but I'm still really struggling with Polly. Really struggling with Polly. Um, I really don't know what it is, but there's just something about the character that I can't kind of gel with or connect to. Um, I just feel like she can sometimes, for me, bring kind of the story down um, in terms of my enjoyment. And I enjoy it less because she's there. Um, but obviously I'm assuming she's probably around for a little bit longer, so yeah i'll have to see how it goes but i'll see you soon thank you